Hi everyone, today we're going to continue with the next topic which is called chi-squared goodness of fit test. And first I'm going to explain you what is the chi-squared goodness of fit test and what are the steps to follow in order to solve any type of questions here. And let's start first with what is chi-squared goodness of fit test. Although it might sound quite familiar with the one that we've already talked about or the chi-squared test of independence, there is one main difference here, and this is why we use the chi-squared goodness of fit test. We're going to use it to check if the data from a sample follows given distribution. And here there will be three different types of questions, depending what type of distribution we have given and we'll have to check. We'll have questions where we have to check if the variable follows uniform distribution, and this means that the expected frequencies are going to be the same everywhere. We'll have questions for binomial distribution and we'll have questions also for normal distribution. How we are going to calculate the expected frequencies for each of them, I'm going to show you once we start solving questions together. And now let's see what are the main steps when we perform chi-squared goodness of fit test. I'm going to start with the first step which is almost the same as in the chi-squared test of independence, we will have to write down our h null hypothesis and the one which is the alternative one or H1. In order to do that, however, we are going to use different wording. And for example, if we have a variable that we have to check if it follows normal distribution, this means that we're going to write down h null and the variable follows normal distribution. For h1, we'll just use the opposite statement and we're going to write down that the variable does not follow normal distribution. Now in the second step, again, we'll have to calculate the degrees of freedom. You just have to remember that in the chi-squared goodness of fit test, we're not gonna have rows and columns. We will just have the number of the outcomes and from the number of the outcomes, which we use k, we're going to subtract one. So we'll figure out the degrees of freedom using the formula k minus one, where k is the number of the outcomes. And now the third step is quite different from the one which was in chi-squared test of independence, because here we'll have to calculate expected frequencies depending on what type of distribution we have, uniform, normal, or binomial. And let's move on to the next step here. After we've calculated the expected frequencies and we have the observed frequencies from the initial table, we'll have to create a list in our GDC and put the values there. After this step, the last three steps are going to be the same as they were in the chi-squared test of independence because we'll use the table that we've created, the list, to figure out our p-value and the chi-squared statistics. And based on the result for them, we're going to either accept or reject h null. And here the conditions are going to be the same. If the p-value is greater than the level of significance, we're going to accept the h null, and also if the chi-squared statistic is less than the critical value, we're going to accept the h null. And in the last step, we'll have to write down our conclusion, which was the same as in the chi-squared test of independence. And now let's continue with solving some questions together. Let's take a look on the first question now, which is for chi-squared goodness of fit test. First, we're going to read the question. We're going to see what is the most important information in the question. And then I'm going to show you how to solve it step by step. So we have that a carpet salesman is interested in how his sales are distributed and records his sales result over a period of six months. The data is shown in the table and the chi-squared goodness of fit test is to be performed on the data at the 5% significance level to find out where the data fits a uniform distribution. So the key points here are that we're going to perform chi-squared goodness of fit test and we're going to check if this variable or the number of the sales 
follows uniform distribution. And now after we have this information, we can start solving the question stating our H0 and H1. For H0, I'm going to write down that number of cells follows uniform distribution And for H1, I'm going to write exactly the opposite of this statement. So I'm going to write down that number of cells does not follow uniform distribution. And now after we write down our H0 and H1, we can move on with finding the degrees of freedom. And we said that for the degrees of freedom of chi-squared goodness of fit test, we'll have to just count the outcomes and then subtract one. So we have six outcomes. So we are going to write down six minus one, which equals to five. The third step now, after we have these observed frequencies, is to figure out the expected frequencies. To find the expected frequencies in the uniform distribution, it's easy because we are going to add up all the observed frequencies and we are going to divide by the number of the outcomes, which is 6. So I'm going to write down 16 plus 12 plus 14 plus 20 plus 15 plus 19. And please remember that this method is going to work only if we talk about uniform distribution. For the binomial and normal distribution, in order to calculate the expected frequencies, I'm going to show you another method. And here we're going to get 96 over 6, which equals to 16. And on the next page, I will just create another table in order to show you what we're going to put on our calculator. So on the left side, we're going to write down the observed frequencies. And on the right one, we're going to put the expected frequencies. All expected frequencies were equal to 16. So I can just fill out the whole second column with 16. And now I'm going to just rewrite the other values, which were 16, 12, 14, 20 and let's see what else we had 15 and 19 and this is important to remember that when you have chi-squared goodness of fit test before you start using your calculator you should have you should have this table the table is going to consist out of the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies and now you can open your gdc and I'm going to show you step by step how to calculate your p-value and the chi-squared statistic. And after we have this table with observed and expected frequencies, we can just put all the values in another spreadsheet on the calculator. And I'm going to show you how this is going to work. So you can just open the menu, add lists and spreadsheet, and you can see that now we're going to have a spreadsheet and we'll start filling out our values for the observed and expected frequencies. So first I'm going to fill out the observed frequencies. So 20 and then 15 and 19. Let me just double check the values. And then we're going to fill out also the expected frequencies. All the expected frequencies, they were the same. So you have to remember that whenever you have uniform distribution and you have to conduct chi-squared goodness of fit tests for uniform distribution, the expected frequencies are going to be the same. And now we have to also put names for our columns. So for the observed frequencies, I'm just going to use, let's say, OPS. And for the expected ones, I will write down expected and let me see, let me just write it down as EX, which is going to work out. But of course, you can choose any other 
names for your columns as well. Now, after we have the table with the values, the next step is to perform our goodness of fit test. We are going to use again the menu, statistics and stat tests. And now keep in mind that we have to choose option seven. Whenever we're going to check if a variable follows given distribution, the option that we have to choose here is option seven. Now you can press OK. And here the important thing is to put the names of the observed and expected list correctly. We said that the observed list here is going to be OPS, so I'm going to choose it. And the expected list is going to be EX. The degrees of freedom, we have to also fill this out, but we already have it because we calculated it in the beginning is equal to 5. And this is where we're going to get our result in which column. We're going to get it in column C, which is OK, and we can just press OK. And now you can see that we're getting the information here, which is showing the p-value and also the chi-squared statistic. In this case, we needed the p-value because we are going to compare it with the significance level, which was given in the question. So I'm going to write down the p-value here. And I'm going to try to be as precise as possible. So let me see. We have afterwards two. And I'm going to write it down like that. And now let's see what else we had. We had that the significance level is equal to 5%. So I'm going to write down this 5% as 0 0.05. And now you can easily see that our p-value or 0.05. 7192 is greater than 0 0.05. In other words, the p-value is greater than the level of significance. And now if we have to write down our conclusion, if you remember, whenever the p-value is greater than the significance level, this means that we're going to accept h no. And you have to be careful that you don't leave your final conclusion as only accept H no. You have to be precise and to write down that the variable or number of sales follows uniform distribution. Because this was what we wrote down in the beginning. And that's it, guys. Once again, you have to start with writing down first your H0 and H1 hypothesis, figure out the degrees of freedom, and this is the key part here where you're going to find your expected frequencies, because afterwards you'll be able to make a table in which you're going to write down the observed and the expected frequencies, and with this table, you'll be able to fill out the values on the calculator, get the p-value or the chi-squared statistics, and afterwards you'll be able to write down your conclusion and if you're going to accept or reject the h no. And now we can move on to the next question. Let's continue with the next question now and see how we're going to solve it. We have that the times taken by eight-year-old children to solve a puzzle can be modeled by a normal distribution with mean 12 minutes and standard deviation 2.5 minutes. The times taken to solve the same puzzle by a random sample of 50 10-year-old children are as follows. And you can see the table. And we have to test using a 10% significance level whether the times of the 10-year-old children come from the same distribution. Now you can see some of the main key points here. First of all, we have normal distribution and you already might remember that for the normal distribution, we can write down variable false normal distribution and inside the bracket, we have to write down the mean, which is 12 and the standard deviation, which is 2.5 on the power of two. 
Now the next step here is to identify that we're going to perform chi-squared goodness of fit test because we'll have to check if the times of the 10-year-old children come from the same normal distribution. And now we can write down our h null, which is going to say that the times follow the normal distribution. And you can write down the information for this normal distribution, which is 12 and 2.5 on the power of 2. And h1 will be that the times of the 10 year old children don't follow the normal distribution. And that's it for the first step now. We have our no and alternative hypothesis. Now the second step here was to identify the degrees of freedom. And in order to do that, we just have to see how many outcomes we have. And you can see that we have five different outcomes, which means that we're going to just do five minus one, which is equal to four. And now, because we're talking about normal distribution, in the third step, where we have to calculate the expected frequencies, we're going to perform some calculations to get the expected frequencies from each observed frequencies, from each observed frequency. And now I'm going to show you how this is going to work out for the normal distribution. In the first question, once again, we had uniform distribution. That's why all the expected frequencies were the same. But now in the normal distribution, we'll have to calculate each expected frequency using the calculator. And now we can write down that we accept h no. But please remember that you cannot just leave your conclusion with accept or reject h no. You have to be more precise. And in this case, you can write down that there is sufficient evidence to suggest that the number of sales follows uniform distribution. And let's recap once again what we did in this question. First of all, we stated what is our h null and h1. We figured out what is the degrees of freedom and then the key point here is to be able to calculate the expected frequencies. And you have to remember that whenever we're checking if a variable follows uniform distribution, the expected frequencies are going to be the same. Afterwards, we created this list with two columns where we have the observed and the expected frequencies. We put it as a spreadsheet on the calculator and we calculated what our p-value is equal to. Depending on what the p-value is equal to, we can state if we are going to accept or reject the h null, and we can write down the conclusion afterwards. And now we can move on to the next question. In order to calculate the expected frequencies now, we are going to use the original values from the first table. But let me first show you which formula we are going to need to calculate expected frequencies when we have normal distribution, as in this case, we're going to use the formula that the expected frequency is equal to the probability times n, where n is the total number of trials. And in our case, we have in total 50 children, which means that n is going to be equal to 50. And now let's see how we're going to find the probability. 
You can see that we have five different ranges for the time and we'll have to figure out the probability for each of these times. So let's first take when t is less than or equal to 9. So I'm going to write this down and we have to find the probability when we have that x follows normal distribution with information for the mean 12 and standard deviation 2.5. Those of you who have watched my video for normal distribution, you might remember how this is going to work. But let me show this one more time. We're going to open the menu probability and probability distributions and now here you have to always choose normal CDF and for the lower bound we're going to take a very small number and for the upper bound we're going to take 9. For the mean we're going to write down 12 and for the standard deviation we're going to write down 2.5. We press OK and you can see the first probability here and in order to save time you can just Copy this probability with Ctrl and C and then multiply this by 50 in order to get the result for the first expected frequency. And I'm going to write now to write that the expected frequency for the first value when t is less than or equal to 9 is equal to 5.75. Don't forget that now we have to calculate the expected frequencies for the other times. So we continue now when t is between 9 and 11. So let me write this down as well. And we're going to perform exactly the same calculation, just changing our lower and upper limit here. So normal CDF and between 9 and 11. Let me just write this down. And mu is equal to 12 and 2.5 is the standard deviation. We press OK, and now this probability will be copied and then multiplied by 50. So 50 times the probability will give me 11.48 for the second expected frequency. And let's write it down. And let's see how we're going to round it. So we have 11.48. And now let's continue with the other expected frequencies. I will just write this down here in order to make it quicker. We need three more expected frequencies using exactly the same method. So I will just show you which times we have to put now. We have to put from 11 to 13. I open the calculator again and I'm going to just choose distribution, normal CDF, and I'm going to change 11, 13, and then everything else is the same. Press OK, and you can see the next probability, which I'm going to multiply by 50. And you can do this together with me if you like to just practice how this is going to work. So we get 15.54 here. So let me write this down. And we have two more to go. The next ones were from 13 to 15. So once again, I'm going to just change the limits and we are going to get the next probability here. We have 12, we have 2.5. We press OK and after we get this probability, the same thing, we have to multiply it by 50. Don't forget to do this. So 50 times the probability that we get, Ctrl and V, and press Enter to get 11.48 here. And I'm going to write this down as well. So 11.48. And we have one more expected frequency to calculate. We have to calculate when the time is greater than 15, which means that we'll just change again the values on the calculator. So I'm going to open the calculator probability distributions and we start with lower bound of 15 and for the upper bound we can just put very big number and here we have 12 and 2.5 pressing ok and you can take this probability again multiply by 50 to get the expected frequency and you can get 5.75 for the last expected frequency and now after we got all the expected frequency, you can see them, we're going to make a list with the observed and expected frequencies 
and from there we're going to continue with calculating our p-value. After we calculated the expected frequencies, we're going to create a table in which we are going to put the observed and the expected frequencies. You can see the table which you have to draw as well and let me just show you where did we get these observed frequencies from. So I will remove some of the information here that we don't need. And you can see these are the observed frequencies. The frequencies that are given in the beginning of the question, we have 10, 11, 20, 5, and 4. And these are the values that we put in the first column always. And in the second column, we always put the expected frequencies that we've just calculated. And you can see them here as well. And now after we have the expected frequencies and the observed frequencies, we can create a spreadsheet on the calculator and put the same values in two different columns. You can see that I've already created this spreadsheet. And one thing which is very important here is to put first the observed frequencies and to name the columns as they are. So the observed frequencies, you can give a name, for example, OPS or something like that. And for the expected frequency, you just have to give another name. And now after we have the two columns, you can press menu, statistics and stat tests. And the test that we're going to use here is the chi-squared goodness of fit test because we're going to check if this variable, the times, is going to follow normal distribution. So we press enter. And now we have to choose the correct observed list, which is OPS the expected list, which is EX, and the degrees of freedom, we calculated them in the beginning of the question. And the first result column is going to be column C. We press OK, and now we can just scroll and see the information that we're going to need. The chi-square statistic is 8.63. The p-value is 0.071. And let me write this down. Uh, it's important to include as much information as possible. So first of all, I'm going to write down that the chi-squared statistic is equal to 8.63. And afterwards, I'm going to write the information for the p-value, which is 0 0.071. And we can write down that we used GDC, of course. And now let's take a look what was the level of significance in order to compare it. We had the level of significance, which is 10% or 0.1. And now we can just compare the p-value with the level of significance. And you can see that the, our p-value from the calculator is less than the level of significance. We're going to write this down and based now on our result, we can say, if you remember also from the previous questions, if the p-value is less than the level of significance, we are going to reject h no. And now this is not the final answer yet because we have to explain a little bit more. So reject h no, or you can write down that there's sufficient evidence to suggest that the times don't follow normal distribution. And again, you can write down the information that we got for the normal distribution. The normal distribution was with mean 12 and standard deviation 2.5. And that's it for this question. The main part here is to be able, after you, of course, write down your null hypothesis and also the H1, and you calculate the degrees of freedom, you have to remember that whenever we have normal distribution, we have to calculate the expected frequencies for each of the times. And after we do that, we can then create a table with observed and expected frequencies in order to calculate our chi-squared statistic and the p-value as well. 
And now we're going to continue with one more question in which I'm going to show you how to solve questions in which you have to check if a given variable is going to follow binomial distribution. Now we are going to continue with the next question for chi-squared goodness of fit test, in which we are going to check if a given variable follows binomial distribution. You can read the question on your own, and then we are going to identify the most important information in the question. So first of all, we can start with the information that this time we have binomial distribution. And some of you might remember that the main characteristics of the binomial distributions were the number of trials, which in this case is 3, and the probability for success, which is 0.7. We also have a table with the number of successful serves out of 3, which will be our variable, and the frequency, which is actually our observed frequency. And now let's see what is the first question here. The first question, as always, is to state the hypothesis for a chi-squared goodness of fit test. In order to do that, we're going to write down h null, and we identified our variable, which is the number of successful serves. So I can write down that number of successful serves out of three or just number of successful serves follows binomial distribution. And we can also write down the characteristics here. So x follows binomial with number of trials three and probability 0 0.7. For h1, we're going to write down the opposite statement of that, and we're going to write that the number of successful serves does not follow. Binomial distribution. And now after we have this, we're going to take a look on letter B. In letter B, we have to find the expected frequencies and write the number of degrees of freedom. Let's start first with the degrees of freedom. In order to get the degrees of freedom, we just have to see how many outcomes we have. We have four outcomes in total, so we'll do four minus one, which equals to three. And now in order to find the expected frequencies, we're going to use the information that we have for the binomial distribution and we're going to calculate each expected frequency from the number of successful serves out of three. So let's see how we're going to calculate that. And let's see now how we're going to calculate the expected frequencies here. In order to do that, first I'm going to write down the formula for expected frequency, which we already used in the previous question for normal distribution. The expected frequency is always equal to the probability times the number of trials. And in this case, in order to figure out the number of trials, we'll have to add up all the observed frequencies which are given in the initial table, which means that I'll have to add up 7 plus 28 plus 95 plus 70, which is equal to 200. And now we can just write down that n is equal to 200. For the probability now, we'll have to go back to this table again and see that we have different number of successful serves, which means that we'll have to calculate the probability for each of these number of serves. So let's start first when the number of serves is equal to zero. And don't forget that we're going to check if the data follows binomial distribution. So you can write down binomial and then inside the bracket the number of trials and the probability 0.7 and this information was given in the beginning of the question. Those of you who have watched my video for binomial distribution, you might remember how to calculate probability when you have this information, but now I'm going to remind you once again. So you can open the calculator, then choose menu and calculator 
And from here, you have to choose probability and probability distributions. Don't forget that in this case, you have to choose binomial PDF because we have the exact value of x, which is equal to zero. The number of trials are three and the probability is 0 0.7. Now we press OK and you can see that we got 0 0.027. And now I'm going to write this down. And in order to find the first expected frequency, I will just multiply 0 0.027 times 200 and I'm going to get 5.4. After I have the first expected frequency, I'm going to follow exactly the same steps, but when the number of serves is equal to 1, 2, and 3. And afterwards, I will multiply each of these probabilities by 200 in order to get the expected frequency. And let's do this together on the calculator and see what will be the results. So I will just open the calculator once again and switch the values. So I will go to distributions, binomial PDF, and still we have 3 and 0 0.7. And the only thing that we're going to change here is the x value. So now we're going to check what is the probability for the number of the serves to be equal to 1. So I'm going to put 1, OK. Let me just do this once again. And we'll see what will be the new probability. Here it is. We have the new probability, which is 0 0.189. We can copy this probability, paste it, and multiply by 200. And we'll get 37.8. So I'm going to write this down as the second expected frequency. And once again, we're going to do it when x is equal to 2. And everything else is the same. Don't forget this. Press OK. And again, you have to copy with Control C. Paste the result with Control V. Multiply by 200 and we get 88.2. You can do this together with me in order to practice how to get these values. And the last value now is when x is equal to 3, again the same steps, and we change x to be equal to 3, and the other information, we're going to keep it the same. So probability 0 0.7, and the number of the trials is equal to 3, and now we press OK again, and we get the last probability, which I'm going to copy and paste, and then multiply by 200 in order to save time and to get the last expected frequency. So I get 68.6. .6. Now, after we have all expected frequencies, we're going to create a table in which we're going to put the observed frequencies, or the ones which are given in the beginning, and we're going to put in the second column the expected frequencies that we got. After we do that, we're going to put this on the calculator as well, and we're going to calculate the chi-squared statistic value, and we'll be able to continue further with this question. As a next step now, we said that we're going to create a table, and you can see the table now with the observed and the expected frequencies. Once again, we take the observed frequencies from the original table where we have 7, 28, 95, and 70, and the expected frequencies, we just calculated them. And now with this table, we're going to just create a spreadsheet in the calculator, and we're going to put all the values. So I already did this. You can see the spreadsheet with the values. You can see the names of the two columns. And now we're going to perform chi-squared goodness of fit test. So you can press statistics, stat test, and option seven. And here the important part is to choose the correct columns and the correct names. So the first column with the observed frequencies is OPS. The second one is EX. The degrees of freedom, we found them earlier and they were equal to 3. 
and the result column is going to be column C. And now we can press OK. And you can see the chi-squared statistic here is going to be equal to 3.57 if we round to three significant figures. So we can write down that chi-squared equals to 3.57 using GDC. And now let's see what is the last question here. We have the critical value, which is 6.25, and we have to write down our conclusion after we performed all of these calculations. So we're going to do that. We have to compare our chi-square statistic with the critical value. So we'll just write down that 3.57 is less than 6.25. In other words, chi-squared statistic is less than the critical value. And if you remember, whenever we have this condition present, then we can say that we're going to accept H no. And now we can just go back and check what was our H no. In H no, we said that the number of successful serves follows binomial distribution. This means that now our conclusion will be the following there's sufficient evidence that the number or there's sufficient evidence to suggest you can also write it like that to suggest that the number of successful serves follows binomial distribution. And you can write down the binomial distribution, which was x follows b, and the numbers of the trials is 3, and the probability is 0 0.7. And this is the last part of the question. So your answer here should be based on the calculations that we did before. Don't forget, very important part here is when you have binomial distribution to calculate the expected frequencies for each probability. And in order to do that, you're going to use the GDC and then these probabilities, you're going to multiply them by the number of the trials. And afterwards, you can just put the expected frequencies and the observed frequencies in the table from which we can get the chi-squared statistic and, if necessary, also the p-value. This was the last question for today from this topic. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you in my next video.